Tiger once said Mo Norman and Ben Hogan are the only golfers in the history of golf who owned their swings. And when Tiger Woods himself carves a man's face on golf's Mount Rushmore, you know that man is beyond human. Mo Norman was not your regular golfer. No, he was far from that. He was golf's very own Einstein. You can call him the greatest ball striker that ever lived. And only a few would argue. Even the best striker of, of a golf ball the world's ever known. After knowing about Mo Norman and his swing, you will see why a perfectionist like Bryson DeChambeau sought out the secrets of Norman's swing. Why Lee Trevino thinks he could have dominated the golf scene on the big stage. Norman would have won. I think he would have won the U.S. Open. I think he would have won all the tournaments around the world. And why his swing is taught by many coaches today. Mo Norman was out of this world in many ways. He was born in the industrial city of Kitchener in Ontario, where he played hockey with his friends as a boy. But his choice game soon changed when he concluded that the golf club was better than the hockey stick. Golf back then wasn't the world-renowned showcase it is today, but Norman wanted to do nothing else. Due to his background and the lack of access to golf facilities at the time, Norman had little space to practice his newfound obsession. But you will always make time and space for what you love, right? He had to hone his swing on the streets of Kitchener, where most broken windows were followed by Norman's triumphant cry of bullseye. One oddball had found another, and the advice of his parents to choose a different sport fell behind deaf ears. Norman started caddying, and he would wait till evening to use a practice field, sometimes cutting the overgrown grass with his club and usually swinging late into the night. Playing golf in the dark and the fear of losing his balls probably conditioned him to model his swing to be as accurate as possible a trait that would define his existence later in life. Playing on his own terms in a crude environment also made developing his game difficult. Although Norman shot his first sub-100 round at 16, by continuously hitting hundreds of balls till his hands bled, he perfected his craft. You never been really not not since I've been 19, no. So what went wrong with your game when it went wrong? Norman had no money or support, but nothing could stop him from playing golf. He would hitchhike to tournaments, work odd jobs to sustain himself, and sleep in bunkers around Canada. And no, he wasn't feeling the sand to better his lie. He was lying on the sand. It wasn't long before he took over the Canadian amateur circuit. Norman won his first Canadian amateur in 1955, and to prove his doubters wrong, he defended his title in 56. His performance earned him a spot in the 1956 Masters. A pin center at a bowling alley in Kitchener, Canada had made it to the USA. He was super happy to play with his heroes, but he would soon find out that there was nowhere like home. The PGA Tour was a place where class ruled, and the funny-looking Canadian with colorful sweaters and a penchant for teeing up on weird tees such as his empty Coca-Cola bottles just wasn't welcome at the time. He would get an invitation to Augusta again in 1957, but after destroying his palms by shooting about 800 balls on the eve of the third round following some advice from Sam Snead, he withdrew from the tournament. Then. A confrontation in Pensacola with some top dogs on the PGA Tour would make him swear never to play on the tour again. It was his carefree behavior that earned him the scowl of the big birds. They didn't like the fact that he wasn't dressing up like everyone else, so they gave him a dressing down. This encounter made sure that Norman's best years would be spent on the Canadian Tour. After he learned he couldn't be selling his trophies from amateur events, he got his pro card with the help of a pro he was assisting at a country club in 1958. His record on the Canadian Tour was 55 wins, including two Canadian PGA Championships, 33 course records, 17 holes in one, and three rounds of 59. If he'd had a proper presence on the PGA Tour, how do you think Mo would have fared? Tell us in the comments. Later, he won seven straight Canadian Senior PGA Championships, tied for fifth on his eighth attempt, and won the ninth by eight strokes. Although his record in 27 outings on the PGA leaves much to be desired, it didn't stop the game's greatest players from stopping to watch him in his elements. This picture of Fred Couples, Ben Crenshaw, Nick Price, and Sir Nick Faldo helping themselves to a sight of Norman's artwork says it all. He was a professional's dream. There is still nothing like Norman's single playing golf swing. It is as seamless as it is efficient, but it took millions of practice shots and a couple of nights in the bunker to acquire it. Norman was famous for hitting 18 fairways and 18 greens with the accuracy of a well-calibrated missile launcher. And he was an incredibly fast player. Oh, he was fast. He was so fast that he feared he might be penalized for how fast he played. At his first Masters, Mo took his first tee shot in the middle of his introduction, 
and when someone asked him why he did that, his reason was that the green had not been moved. Yeah, his wit was lightning as well. You would think that a precision freak like him would take some time to size up his shots before hitting the ball. But Norman only took one look at the fairway and knew where his ball would land, right where he wanted it. He once hit 1,540 drives in about seven hours to prove he was truly the 747 of golf. Once Norman gripped it, he ripped it, and no one would ever feel the ball like that again. A feeling of greatness. I'm the only golfer in the world who's got the feeling of greatness. The single plane swing takes its name from the stance that creates it. While conventional swings require a shorter distance to maximize impact, Norman's style uses more distance between the golfer and the ball to achieve one plane without the kink that results from the orthodox stance. It also allows him to hit the ball without having to rotate his spine. It's a master stroke, very much like freeing a bird. It's the way of least effort that produces the best results. And guess who unraveled it? Bryson DeChambeau. The scientist has been known to always be on the lookout for any detail that can improve his game. So he jumped at the concept once he figured out the mechanics of such a repeatable and efficient swing. DeChambeau spices his swing with an added twist and a lift of his right heel to balance him while generating speed and creating the beautiful bobs we all love to see. Another person who appreciated Moe's swing was Jack Kuykendall, who developed a trademark swing after studying swing mechanics for many years and failing to learn enough to start a pro career. He applied his knowledge of physics to discover how the conventional swing hurt performance by insisting on gripping with the fingers. He found out that swinging with the club handle inside the palm is a sure way to ensure consistent movement. This revelation made him drastically better and led him to Mo Norman. Would you consider a switch from the conventional to the single plane swing to improve your game? Tell us in the comments. Jack discovered Mo Norman through a friend who showed him that the legend had been doing what he'd just found for decades. And this made Jack Moe under his natural golf outfit. Soon, their impressive clinics became a real spectator event. It was more of a magic show as people watched Pipeline Moe lace hundreds of balls straight and pure into greens and fairways without hitting the tee. Moe's mesmerizing exhibitions brought him the long-deserved fame. An article in the Wall Street Journal spread his name far and wide. It was where Wally Uhlheim, then Titleist and FootJoy's chairman and CEO, saw him and decided to award Moe $5,000 per month for the rest of his life for his commitment to Titleist balls all his life. That gift turned Norman's world around. A man who had gotten used to living without money, who lived in a $400 a month motel room and packed his clothes in his car, he would now always have money. It's fair to suggest that Mo could have been a millionaire had he played in this era when his extreme skills and eccentricities would have grown him a money tree. That personality they frowned at would be considered unique today. He never even wore anything more appalling than John Daly's wardrobe, and he probably would have had a media team to handle his acceptance speeches. He was known to be too shy to give them. But he did give one at his induction into the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame in 1995, shortly before he left the world in 2004. The legend of Mo Norman and his single-plane golf swing lives on through players like DeChambeau and Steven Stricker. And his former student, Todd Graves, known as Little Mo, is just one of the army of proponents passing his legacy to generations. As many who knew him personally noted, he was really just a child at heart. To an observer, he was a loner on the surface. But Mo was never truly alone. He always had golf to keep him happy. This was the message of the life of the straightest ball striker that ever lived. Golf is happiness. It's intoxication without the hangover. If you enjoyed this video about Mo Norman, Check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.